To those who supported Marco, who worked so hard, we welcome you with open arms. So Ted Cruz channeling Journey last night in his speech after the primary, saying, Okay, Marco people, we're ready for you. Joining us right now, Bill Crystal, editor of the Weekly Standard. Uh, well, will that work? Do you think that there's a case to be made that the Rubio voters, and for that matter, the delegates, will find a home with the Ted Cruz camp? Well, there's a case to be made. But first of all, let me say I'm, I'm in New York, and I'm thinking of all of you guys in Washington there with the Metro shut down. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? I, I grew up in New York. I don't remember the New York subway ever shutting down except for when there was strikes or, or like Hurricane Sandy or something. Yeah. But I guess they know what they're doing. I assume it's the prudent thing to do, but geez. Um, anyway, I'm uh, good luck to everyone uh, committing in to our office, to your office, to all the offices. In Thanks for feeling our pain. I'm guessing the I week... Do, I do. I think I may stay in New York for about three or four more weeks. So <laughs> I think, <laughs> like that. Nice to have a functioning subway system, you know. <laughs> um, the uh, it was a good night for Trump. Um, you know, he, he's been a very skillful candidate, uh, not one I like, but you got to respect him. Also lucky, uh, if 864 votes in switched to Missouri, Cruz would have won Missouri, Cruz would have won a state, it would be three out of five for Trump, not four out of five. I think that the whole narrative, the momentum would be pretty different. People would be focusing on the fact that, you know, Trump still has a bit of an uphill uh, a task to get to 50% of the delegates at the convention. He's running at about 47% now. Um, and instead, four out of five is a strong showing, and it's easier to write the scenario where Trump gets to uh, 1,237 delegates probably at this point than to write the scenario where he doesn't. It's possible that he doesn't, certainly. Arizona becomes important next week. And that gets to your question, do the Rubio supporters around the country and others who prefer other candidates, Walker, Bush, you name them, uh, go to Cruz in Arizona. Do some of them go to Kasich in some of the northeastern states? Uh, could happen. Could happen. Uh, so, uh, where do you think they? What is most likely? I mean, a lot of people say if you voted for Rubio, it seems like it'd be very hard for you to vote for Trump. D- doesn't it seem most natural that those people would gravitate toward Ted Cruz? Yeah, I think so. And Cruz is obviously trying to reach out to them. I think the first test will be Arizona. I don't think Kasich, which is next week. So next week is Utah and Arizona. Arizona's winner take all. Um, not quite as big as Florida, obviously, or Ohio, but not, not a small state either. And um, let's see what happens. I mean, that's the state where Trump has been ahead by some. There hasn't been much recent polling. You could make a case that it's kind of a natural state for Trump, but also it could be a pretty strong state for Cruz. Kasich will probably mostly stay out. So we're going to get something pretty close to a one-on-one race, probably the closest we've had to it so far. In Missouri, you know, Cruz ran even with Trump. I, you could say Arizona shouldn't be that different from Missouri, probably, in terms of its electorate. So uh, that will be a, a real test. I think if Cruz can beat Trump in Arizona, it remains very... Well, then I would even bet on a contested convention. It would show that there is more anti-Truth sent- sentiment, more anti-Trump sentiment in the party than people think. If Trump wins Arizona, certainly if he wins it easily, then you just got to, uh, it's a long shot then to be able to put together an anti-Trump majority for the convention. So uh, this whole anti-Trump thing, and then that cer- certainly is part of this this movement and narrative uh, to try to get to the convention with a strategy. Uh, don't the proponents of this strategy, the stop Trump strategy, vote for anyone but Trump so we can get to the convention, don't they d- owe it to us to hear what that end game means? Shouldn't they be coming forward right now saying, and when we get to the convention, here's who we'll support or here's what our plan is? I mean, I think practically speaking, if if Cruz is pretty close to Trump at the convention and Kasich has the next chunk of delegates, you'd probably end up with a Cruz nomination and conceivably a Cruz-Kasich uh, ticket. I mean, I, I don't think it's very... It would take a whole bunch of deadlocked ballots to get people to move to sort of, well, gee, let's, let's nominate. Think about nominating someone who didn't even run or didn't get any votes. So I think practically speaking, but, at this point, the stop Trump strategy is probably a nominate Cruz strategy. And, and, but you realize that if that happens, the the, the entire mobilized uh, voting block for Donald Trump that has been so active and so energetic, passionate, they they're gone. And and Donald Trump, I mean, how do we know he's not going to run a third party? And isn't that wasn't that the concern back in August? He could, but of course, if Trump is the nominee, that could also be a third party, and a lot of people will defect. So either way, it's a tough situation. I don't know that they're gone. I mean, I think they will be unhappy for a while, but at the end of the day, don't they prefer Ted Cruz to Hillary Clinton? What? Wait, can I just push back on that? If, tr- if Trump is the nominee, then there will be a third party. I thought that the Republican, the RNC, said we're all going to back whoever the nominee is. Well, the and RNC did- can say whatever it 
wants, but the rest of us are free agents. That pledge is always stupid. And uh, if some senator wants to run or some former governor wants to run or former nominee wants to run, it's a free country, but, you know. But, Bill Crystal, I remember talking to you in August after that debate on Fox News when Donald Trump wouldn't raise his hand to pledge that he would support the nominee, and I thought that that really bothered you. I thought No, you thought... it did not bother me at all. I was always against the pledge. I hate pledges. I hate them in the state okay. level in Virginia. It's idiotic. I wouldn't pledge. I didn't. I wouldn't have voted for Pat Buchanan if he'd been the nominee in '92 or '96. I wouldn't have voted for Ron Paul if he were the nominee in 2008 or 2012. This idea that voters are supposed to be these sheep, and because these guys raise their hand on a stage, they're supposed to. We're all supposed to just stick with the party is, is childish, of course. All I mean, right. don't, uh, so I'm, I'm not for that. Incidentally, Rubio would have been helped if he had said, "I took that pledge." He had said two weeks ago, I took that pledge, but you know what? The way Donald Trump has behaved, I'm not so sure I can support him now. I think it made him look weaker when he kind of said, oh, gee, I guess I still would support the nominee. All right, thanks for correcting me. All right, yeah, so, sure. so, so listen, at, at 11 o'clock this morning, the president is going to announce his nominee for the Supreme Court. Now, we, we know there are not going to be any hearings up on Capitol Hill, but the very act of nominating someone turns it into a political issue that will become an impact, will have some impact, I would imagine, on this election process process. How does that all play out? Hard to know. We haven't really gone through just like so many things this year. It's hard to predict because we haven't really had a good, you know, a case study like this. And uh, people have a couple of instances of election year nominations, but they're not really uh, comparable to this for the court and the balance and Scalia's sudden death. And um, I think with President Obama, the Democrats will hammer hard that the Republicans are being irresponsible. I do think it puts the Supreme Court front and center in this election. Yeah. It probably would have been there anyway because it's so obvious that the next president will help shape the court. I think getting back to our previous discussion, if with Larry, I mean, if 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 your uh, Republicans who are hesitant to say the least about Trump might come over with the notion that. Well, Hillary Clinton's Supreme Court nominees are going to be awful from our point of view, and maybe Trump's would be okay. Not that Trump has ever shown any great interest in the Constitution or limited government or any of the kind of uh, things that, that a justice like Nino Scalia stood for, but uh, Republicans might talk themselves into that. But I do think the whole question of the Supreme Court, the Constitution, will be front and center. They'll, be, they'll try to put pressure on the Republican senators to break on this. And, I'm, and I think they'll resist the Republican senators, but it's not a sure thing. Well, it plays well for Ted Cruz, that's for sure. Yeah, well, the listen. Short term, I think, yeah. Thank, thank you, you so much, Bill. It's always a pleasure to hey, have great you. great talking to you.